an organ that is always taken not so serious in our body, but very vital in carrying out major metabolic reactions in the body. And in any case that organ is defected, it can bring about serious hazardous effects on our lives. You've seen people who have been to hospitals doing what you call dialysis. I mean, they are put on machines just to, uh, for the, those machines to perform the function of their own kidney. And we just do a lot of things in our lives that really hurt our kidney without us knowing. And by the time we are clocking 40, 45, 50, our kidneys are getting and getting tired and they're getting defected. At the end of the day, we end up wasting millions and millions of money just to erectify or maybe to try to get a transplant over things that we can control when we are still young. My name is Jovia Katuhaise, your teacher of biology. Once again, I'm very happy to be here and I'm very humbled that I'm every Tuesday between 15 hours and 16 hours I get to be here to add on a little bit of a block on your academic journey. I want to thank each and everybody who sits just behind their screens to just come and study biology with me. So just as I've said we introduced homeostasis and today's major focus is going to be on the human kidney, the mammalian kidney, or we are going to look at excretion in mammals. I mean, excretion. So when I was introducing the topic, I gave a major definition of excretion, but we're going to look at our kidney, as I promised last time. The last time I was here, we looked at how the body is able to regulate the amount of water in our body. And then we also looked at the liver, its structure and its function. And then we went ahead and saw what causes some people to urinate so frequently with large volumes of dilute urine on certain days, or what causes people to, uh, to urinate smaller volumes of highly concentrated urine that is very yellow or kind of orange in color. So today we are going to look at the major organ that is in charge of making urine, formation of urine the kidney. Did you know that the kidney is our biological cleansing organ? Like it is like the body cleansing organ of our body. For all the things that we put in our body, all the junk we eat, the medicines we take, the alcohol you people take, those who smoke, for all the toxins that enter into your blood, at first they are filtered at the liver and when the liver fills, they go straight to the kidney and the kidney performs a function of filtering that blood, cleanses the blood. So at the end of, of today's lesson, I want you to know how much stress and pressure and how much you strain your kidney to, to an extent that at a particular point in time it may fail, request it, and, and then you go to hospital and they'll tell you, you know what, you need a kidney transplant. And you know how much it costs? If you've had people do drives for kidney transplants in India, I think here in Uganda it's just started, they're also doing transplants of the kidney. But most people move abroad, Turkey, India, to just do a kidney transplant. But where are you going to get a kidney? Eh? Obera o nori anga kasasi, nori abulichimu, nori abulichimu ngo yo nona ansigo. Ulituke kisa kumia kananga weta aga ansigo yo mulala. Why don't you really preserve your kidney? That is what we're going to look at today. And so, on your screen, my name is Jovia Katuhaise. And for any, any, any inquiries or anything that is done, reach out to me on my email that is katuhaisejrgmail.com. I request it to be projected on the screen. Uh, I request it to be projected on the screen for people to see. Uh, yeah, so uh, that is my email, katuhaisejrgmail.com. And for anything, you can, reach, uh, you can reach me on that email. And what are today's expectations in the next slide? Today we expect to look at excretion in mammals. I mean, how, how a body is able to eliminate wastes outside. Uh, toxic waste products outside of our body. And so we shall gorge on the major excretory, uh, excretory waste, sorry, and the different excretory organs or different organisms living in different environments. Then we shall also look at the Marian excretory or what we call a urinary system. Then we shall also look at the structure and the function of the human kidney, which is our core for today. And then lastly, we shall look at what happens to your body when your kidney fails. I mean, kidney failure. So those are going to be our objectives for today. I just pray that God, because uh, it seems to be very many objectives for the day. Usually there are always three and there are always enough for 40 minutes, but now there are four. I just pray that I go up with time. So excretion, 
excretion, uh, just like its name, excrete, simply means the ability of your body to eliminate toxic waste products or metabolism out, out of your body. Like every time your body cells are doing particular uh, every time your body cells are respiring, they're producing wastes. Every time you're eating, you're putting in different um, food nutrients that are going to be digested, and at the end of the day, some of them won't be digested. <coughs> and as the cells are carrying out different reactions in your body, they're producing a lot of waste, of which range from quite from just gaseous waste, such as carbon dioxide, to very toxic wastes, such as urea and ammonia and whatever, and lactic acid. So we, these wastes need not to accumulate in your body, because when they accumulate in your body, they become so toxic. If, if you, you highly doubt that these wastes can become toxic, a lot of these wastes are always eliminated out of our body through urine, when you urinate. So if you want to know how toxic wastes are, just get a green grass at one a particular spot at your home place and be urinating there every day. green. You urinate there and you make it like a place where you urinate. If you've seen urinals wherever in schools and places where people usually urinate on grass, after some time the green grass will turn to yellow. It will come to orange and it will dry. Now, if your urine can make your grass to dry, what about the components, those wastes that are in urine, if you leave them to over accumulate in your body? You understand why we, now you understand why we need to eliminate those excretory wastes out of a body in, um, in form of urine, lest they accumulate and then become so, so hazardous to our to our, to our health. So what are some of these excretory wastes that the body makes that needs to be eliminated out of the body? On your screen, some of these excretory wastes, uh, they are different organisms, uh, sorry, different organisms eliminate different excretory wastes based on the environment they are in. I'll start with ammonia. Now, the excretory wastes are divided into two. We have those, the nitrogenous, uh, nitrogen containing excretory wastes and then those ones which do not contain nitrogen. So the first, uh, the first group that I have are, are the ones that are the nitrogenous wastes. The first one being ammonia. Ammonia is simply NH3. It's a, it's a waste that is highly toxic in the body and it requires a lot of water for it to be eliminated out of your body. And for ammonia to be, uh, it's, it's a waste that is always um, found in the bodies of freshwater organisms. I mean, organisms that live in freshwater, such as freshwater amoeba, freshwater fish, then freshwater tadpoles. Why in, in freshwater? Because ammonia is so, so toxic and it requires a lot of water for it to be eliminated out of the body. For those people who have been in industries where there is, a hub, where there is, hub up, is it hub up process? Manufacturing of ammonia, and people who have been in chemistry laboratories, the chemistry students, and the moment they release ammonia, you get the entire place smelling, it's fishy. Yeah? Having that toxic and uh, corrosive a smell that is really not palatable at all, or that is very pathetic. So that's ammonia. It's highly toxic and it's found in such organisms. Those organisms that live in fresh water and requires a lot of water for it to be eliminated out of your body. The second is urea. Now urea is a waste product that is uh, excreted from me and you. We are the key examples of organisms that excrete urea as a waste product. It doesn't require a lot of water, but it requires some moderate amounts of water for it to be eliminated. Now, where does urea come from within our bodies? Urea simply comes from excess proteins. I mean, you eat quite a lot of proteins that the ones that you need in the body on a daily basis. Because you know at the end of the day, the end product of digestion of any protein is an amino acid. So if you overeat a lot of proteins that you don't require in your body, like if you eat a lot of meat, you you find someone like you you bag eggs eggs like five you don't need all those eggs you just need an, one egg a day or maybe three three times a week but someone eats like four eggs and then when it comes to lunchtime because you love meat a lot you want to your plate to have a lot of meat on it and then you're having a lot of genus and you you're taking Ex ex excess proteins in your body. And whereas the body is able to store excess carbo uh, carbohydrates in form of glu glycogen and excess fats under our bodies and uh, under the skin and other surrounding our, uh, organs, the body does not store or the body doesn't store 
a lot excess proteins or amino acids in it. When the proteins are quite a lot and you manufacture more amino acids as, as the end product of digestion of a protein, the excess amino acids cannot be stored in the body. And what happens is these amino acids are taken to the liver just after digestion, after they've been absorbed. And in the liver, they undergo a process we call deamination. I've uh, spoken about deamination a lot, and deamination is in this format. This is the structure of an amino acid. It has an amino group, a carbon skeleton, and a carboxyl group. Now, nitrogen has accommodates a maximum of three bonds. That's why this is our two hydrogen, and then this other bond here. So. Uh, during the process of deamination, when you eat excess amino acids or excess proteins and then you form a lot of amino acids in your body that your body doesn't require to be used at that point. Like, you know, proteins are used to make body, body tissues for growth and whatever, making enzymes and hormones and antibodies. So even if there are many, the body can't store them. So the end product is when the excess are there in the liver, they undergo this process of deamination where the amino group here is removed so they remove the amino group and then the carbon skeleton and the carboxy group remains and now this amino group when it is removed it immediately combines uh, forms uh, rea uh, combines with another hydrogen atom to form ammonia but ammonia is highly toxic in a body and we cannot keep it because it requires a lot of a lot of water for it to be eliminated it is very fast converted to urea and then urea is taken to the kidney via the renal artery where it is excreted out so eat a lot of proteins the more the proteins that you eat that you don't require in your body the more the waste products you form uh, uh, that is the more the urea you're forming, meaning that the more the excess amino acids, the more they undergo deamination, and the more uh, urea you're forming, and the more it is excreted out. What does that mean? That eat a lot of meat, bag a lot of eggs, or whatever, you're putting a lot of strain on your liver to keep on deaminating those excess amino acids that your body doesn't require. And then also you're putting a lot of stress on your kidney. So it's eating habits, cool, yeah. You overeat, you put a lot of strain on these organs, the liver and the kidney, to, um, to eliminate the excess that the body doesn't require. So this is urea, it doesn't require a lot of water. And it's, it's, our urine is essentially urea. And urea has a fishy smell. <laughs> so, and this is what I, I keep on saying to the girls. Urea has a fishy smell. I want to tell this to that 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18 year old girl, that when you don't keep a proper hygiene, I mean, if you don't shave the pubic hairs, and you don't wear a cotton knicker, cotton absorbs, absorbs sweat or liquid. And if you wear this silk over nylon, the moment there's a water droplet on any silk cloth, it runs very fast, it's easily soaked in water. So if you don't shave and you wear, you, you're, you're not having a cotton knicker, the urea in your urine has a fishy smell. It's going to get stuck in the pubic hairs after you have done the susu. And there are these girls, you go, you don't carry tissue on you. And then you, you, in, after you've done that part, you just wear your knicker and then you run away. No, there's a lot of urine that is going to remain trapped in your pubic hairs. And if the knicker is not cotton enough to absorb, or that middle part of your knicker, we call it a gazette. It should, should always have cotton on it. If it's not, then it's going to have, get soaked in the urea and has a fishy smell. At the end of the day, you're going to be smelling fish the whole day. There's one common uh, a gentleman who said he grew up knowing that girls smell fish, smell like fish. You know why? Because we don't keep proper hygiene here. Our urine contains urea and urea has a fishy smell. So if we don't keep good hygiene of ourselves, we'll smell fish the entire day. The next excretory, um, 
waste is uric acid, which is the third. Now this one here doesn't require a lot of water. Actually, it requires very little water for it to be eliminated out of the body. And then uric acid is basically found in organisms that are found in desert areas or water scarce areas like deserts. And it is excreted by organisms that do not take a lot of water because it requires very little water for it to be eliminated. And such as uh, we have the birds, we have the insects, and then we also have the um, the birds, the insects, and the reptiles. Reptiles here, I mean the snakes, the geckos, the lizards, and whatever. That is the common waste products they eliminate out of their body because it requires less water for it to be eliminated. The next one is trimethylamine oxide or trimethyl oxide. This one comes from your muscles. A, on a daily basis, our muscles produce this waste product and even the excess proteins within our body. And it's, it's, it, when it accumulates, it becomes highly toxic. But it's not always in much concentration in our body as compared to urea as a waste product. Then we have creatinine. That is, that, that is its structure. Oh, sorry, I have interchanged. Creatinine is the one that is always um, produced from our muscles and also excess proteins in the body. On a daily basis, during, uh, when our muscles are, are go undergoing different activities, this waste product called creatinine is produced. And it's not always in much concentration, just like urea, ammonia, just like urea in our body. Then trimethylamine oxide or trimethyl oxide, it's a waste product that is found basically in marine, marine telos or marine fish. And it's the high, actually it, it, it is, it, it, it's of 75% in marine fish. Fish, marine, I mean that fish that live in areas that are not having fresh waters, that kind of salty, that is the waste product that they will always excrete out. <coughs> then the next waste product is the bile, the bell pigments. Now, these ones are usually formed from the liver. You know, we said we have red blood cells and they have a lifespan of over 120 days, which is close to four months. So after four months, the red blood cells get worn out. And when they get worn out, they are taken to the liver where they are destroyed. Now, in the, during the process of destruction, uh, the hemoglobin is removed. And, uh, sorry, the iron pigment in the hemoglobin is removed. And the remaining components of the red blood cells forms the bile pigments, which are taken to the gold bladder where they are stored. And they, during the process of digestion, they are taken to the duodenum where they aid in the physical digestion of fats. So the bowels, uh, bowel pigments are basically from a liver. And then the, uh, the, the first five were containing nitrogen, the last two bowel pigments, then we have carbon dioxide. These ones are wastes that in the body are produced, but they do not have nitrogen in them. Now carbon dioxide is gotten from body cells during respiration. It's the waste end product of aerobic respiration. Like during aerobic respiration, breaking down food, you use oxygen to break down food. In the, uh, in the end, you produce carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide should not accumulate in your body because excess carbon dioxide in your body will react with the water in the blood plasma, forming a weak carbonic acid. Carbonic acid alters the pH of your body cells and the blood plasma, which is very dangerous, and also lowers the affinity of your hemoglobin for oxygen. So we don't need a lot of carbon dioxide to accumulate in our body. Actually, that is why every time you're doing a lot of activity, like you are playing football, you're dancing, and your breathing rate increases in order for the extra carbon dioxide that is formed as a waste product for it to be eliminated out of our body. The other waste, uh, excess water, this is a waste, a waste in amoeba, especially organisms that live in fresh water, in a lot of water. So they take in a lot of water and they don't need a, a lot because if there's a lot of water in the body of any organisms, sorry, in the body of any organism, it upsets the osmotic balance of the body. Then uh, we also have have uh, excess mineral salts. We also do not need excess mineral salts in our body. And we are going to look at it during your information that when you have excess mineral salts in the body later on, as you're forming urine in the kidney, the some of those minerals or those mineral ions and whatever are eliminated out of your body via the urine. So those are some of the different examples of the excretory wastes that we have in the body. Now, uh, after looking at the different excretory wastes, now I want us to look at the mammalian excretory system, or what you call the mammalian urinary system. Now, what is it? What, what are the components of the uh, urinary system on your screen? 
uh, the major component of the mammalian ur urinary system. There are three major components of our mammalian urinary system, as you can see. Uh, you have the kidneys, a pair of kidneys, and these are located on either side of your vertebral column. Then you have a pair of the ureter. Those are like, uh, you can see, they're like, they're like uh, tubes connecting your kidney to the bladder. Then you have the bladder, and then we have the urethra, which opens through the, the penile organ or through the, uh, the orifice of the vagina in the women where urine is always passed out. So those are the key components of the mammalian urinary system. However, of these three, uh, of these components, the major component, the major excretory organ is the kidney. And we are going to look at the kidney further more in details. As I said, the kidney is our, the two kidneys act as our biological cleaning stations. They clean our blood of all the toxins that are there. Some of you are very good at taking alcohol, junk, narcotics, and kwa gamba mwili gwonogu fulanga kasasiro, like a rubbish, uh, a, a dustbin or a rubbish pit where you just throw everything that is very dangerous. But when you put all those things in your body, what the kidney, uh, what a kidney does, it will come filter your blood of all those uh, toxins that could accumulate and become so dangerous to your body in the next in, in the nearby future so that is how important the kidneys are there are biological cleaning stations now if you look at these kid kidneys there are two now I have two pictures here on your screen I want us to focus on the upper picture where we're having the kidneys the, uh, the urinary system being represented by a pink color in a body of an organism now there are two kidneys there there is the kidney one is located on the left side of the body, another one is located on the right side of the body. If you look at them keenly, one kidney is slightly above the other, and that is normal. Our kidneys, uh, one kidney is uh, above, slightly above the other, and the other one is uh, slightly lower. So the right kidney is slightly lower than the left kidney. Look at it keenly. And you know why the right kidney is uh, slightly lower than the left kidney? Because on the right hand side of the body is where our liver is located. Just the kidneys are just located just beneath, below your liver. So th there's that space the liver is taking on the right side that makes that right kidney become a little bit lower compared to the left kidney. And it's very normal. And by the way, our body organs that are always two, two in most cases, they are not equal. In size, and most cases, they're not equal. Uh, like in size, if you look at the male testicles, if you look at the breasts of the ladies, they're not, the sizes vary. So here, even the kidneys, one, no, not that their size is varying, but their they are, they are location, one is higher than the other. Uh, they are located or attached to the dorsal body wall of the abdominal cap cavity. Now I'm going to speak more about the dorsal body wall. Dorsal, my front side is the ventral side. And then my back side is the dorsal side. Now the abdominal cavity, anything that is cavity, it means that it's space. So we are looking at our kidneys, just, uh, they're located just below the diaphragm, which separates the chest region from the abdominal region. So within the space of the abdomen, Towards the back is where our kidneys are always attached, not towards the front of your stomach, towards the back of the stomach, on the wall of the, uh, of the abdomen is where the kidneys, the two kidneys are attached on both sides, on either side of the vertebral column. And now these kidneys are also, because they are very crucial essential organs, they are surrounded by a fatty capsule, a fatty layer, and this layer is meant to cushion them and protect them against danger or against mechanical damage. And so when you eat excess fats or you eat fats that are, and they become so excess in the body, they, some of them come and they, they coat onto the kidneys. And now if you can look at the second picture, at the bottom you can see that yellow layer on either of the kidneys, that is the fatty layer that is there. It cushions the kidneys against me mechanical damage. So uh, and now um, looking at the structure, the part that is at the bottom of this, of, uh, after the first drawing, after the first picture that is having, represented by pink, the second picture is showing a well-labeled, well-labeled diagram of the urinary system, showing you 
the two main kidneys the kidneys have a shape of a bean they are bean shaped and then they are having they are being uh, uh, connected to, to two blood vessels one is blue another one is red now the one that is red is the renal artery which is the main, main artery that comes from the otter it supplies the kidneys both kidneys with oxygenated blood and then the one that is blue in color that is the renal vein it drains the kidneys of deoxygenated blood and then takes it back uh, takes it back to the body circulation and then back to the heart to the lungs where it's, uh, it will go uh, uh, it will undergo oxygenation now from each of the kidneys comes a tube two tubes each kidney has one tube coming we have the left kidney and the right kidney from the left and the right kidney we are having uh, tubes that flow that are flowing downwards and those tubes are called the ureter and their major function the major function of the ureter is after urine because it's in the kidney where urine is formed as their kidneys are filtering blood they filter they get the toxin out the wastes the urea out and wherever and then the useful products are taken back to the blood circulation now the waste that they have got out alongside water form the urine in the long run we are going to, to see how this is how that happens so after urine has been formed in the kidney then it it, it flows from the kidney towards your bladder down via these two tubes we call the ureter the ones that you're seeing moving downwards from both the kidneys so they carry urine from the kidneys and bring it to the bladder now the bladder is a muscular bag or sac that temporarily stores urine uh, the urinary bladder so your your bladder keeps on filling with urine as urine is being formed from the kidneys it it's transported to the bladder where from the either, either the kidneys via the ureter and the bladder keeps on filling and when the bladder fills with urine akawago you f you really feel like akawago kaju you feel yourself like there's something at, uh, in, in your lower pelvic region you feel you feel it and then that's and then uh, you will need to go and uh, is yourself so it means that on your bladder there is a nerve or a nerve that tells the brain that the bladder is full there's a connection with the neurons that in informs your brain that the bladder is full now you need to go and empty it by doing a short call just below the bladder we have we have a group of muscles we call them the sphincter muscles now these sphincter muscles have the ability to contract and relax and when they contract, they close the bladder. When they relax, they open and urine is forced to move out of the bladder through towards the urethra and then it has to be forced out of your body. Now at the bottom of the sphincter muscles after they have relaxed, we have the urethra. Now a urethra is a tube. It's a tube that um, connects your bladder. Actually it's the tube that through which urine from the bladder passes to uh, to the outside of your body now this urethra tube in the males is located in the penis uh, yes so for, for the males it's the only uh, the penis is the only it's the only organ that allows them to urinate and also to pass their semen upon ejaculation so uh, that's why in males they cannot ejaculate and urinate at the same time so the urethra is that tube it connects from the bladder and then it comes through the penis and then when the bladder is filled the sphincter muscles here will relax then urine from the bladder passes through the urethra and then through the penis and then you urinate out that explains why in most cases when males are urinating the penis is erect because there will also be some blood supply down now also in in in, in the ladies the urethra is not to uh, uh for us our urethra is not where the major opening we call the vagina and i'm talking to the 16 uh, year old i'm sorry i this was a bit a bit big but i just need to tell you now if i don't tell you who will I tell? So, now from the bladder, the gauze, the urethra connects to your female reproductive organ via uh, the, the upper part of the orifice of your vagina. That part is the clitoris. That's where the urethra is. The women has uh, the women sorry women have three holes that are located close to one another. These holes are the, the the opening of the urethra at the clitoris, and then we have the opening of the vagina. Now this is where the baby passes. This is where the menstrual blood passes, and then we have another opening at the bottom that is at the anus. This is where girls defecate from. So these three are close to one another. You should not. 
uh, uh, confuse them. A girl, you don't urinate from the vagina. No, you urinate from the urethra, which is located at the tip of your vagina at the clitoris. And that is it, what I wanted. And by the way, it's very important to keep this area hygienically well, personal hygiene, because these three are close to one another. Here there is urine, here there is menstrual blood, here there is feces. And sometimes these three, at a particular month, will be almost close to one another. So if you don't maintain a proper hygiene of this, you will be smelling. So you, a girl who is there, ensure that this place is cleaned very well. And please, get a mirror and get to study your reproductive organ, lest you not have any of these three, and you're having only two of them. So that is, that is the mammalian urinary system. Now, the next objective here is going to be the mammalian kidney. Now, after looking at the mammalian uh, urinary system as being made up of three major, uh, oh, uh, four major organs, the kidneys, the ureter, the bladder, and the urethra. Now, I said the major excretory organ that we have in our body is the kidney. And so, what is the kidney? On your screen, you can see the kidneys, in, in when you get to measure their length, they're approximately 10 centimeters in length, get a ruler. And rulers have, uh, have the, the, their length is measured in centimeters. Where the 10, 10 centimeter is, that is the length of your kidney. In weight, they're approximately 120 to 170 kgs in weight. Uh, when you look at their shape, just as you're seeing them, the, the first upper ones, the first two, they have a shape of a bean. <laughs> they're bean shaped and they have a reddish brown color. I know why they have a reddish brown color. The reddish brown color is more on the external part than. In, in, in the middle. Because when you look at this one that is cut or through, the longitudinal section of a kidney, you can see that the outer part is more, is, is more red or is more brown. The inner part is lighter. And what makes the outer part? The outer part, we call it the outer dark colored part, we call it the cortex. It's the outer dark colored part. And the inner lighter colored part, we call it the medulla. What makes the cortex darker than the medulla is the fact that the cortex is supplied with a dense network of blood capillaries. I know blood is red in color. And that is why you can see that the outer part, the cortex of the kidney, is so dark in color. It's so red in color compared to the medulla. Now, inside the medulla, which is the inner part, when you see the one that is cut, uh, the longitudinal section, the, it's the lighter bit of it. Now, we have what you call uh, pyramids or pyramids. Now, the pyramids have that kind of a concourse shape in, in the kidney. This kind of a shape. And uh, uh, in number, there are 12 to 6 conical pyramids in each kidney in each medulla uh, of the kidney. So if you count them, like the one that I'm having at the extreme end, if I count there are two, four, six, eight, nine, there are nine um, uh, pyramids, but they are a total of 12 to 16 pyramids in the medulla of the kidney. Now in these pyramids is where we find what we call the kidney nephron. Now we are going to look at the structure of the kidney nephron in details when we shall be studying about process of urine formation. But now you can see that in the medulla of the kidney, we have the nephron. And basically, in the medulla, in the pyramids, we are having the collecting duct uh, and the loop of Henle. And then the other parts, like the Bowman's capsule, the proxima, and the distal convoluted tube, can be found on the cortex of the kidney outside the, med, uh, the medulla of the kidney. Now, uh, the kidney nephrons, their major role is to uh, filter blood and also enhance uh, urine formation. So they come together and then they meet at a point you call the renal, is it the, the renal, 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 renal capsule which connects to the ureter and then the ureter takes the urine away from the kidney to the bladder. Now the kidney is, as you can see in this kidney that is at the extreme end, it is, I said, already talked about it, it is supplied with oxygenated blood by the renal 
artery, which is red in color, and then drained by the renal vein of deoxygenated blood, the one that is blue in color. So the kidney is highly vascularized, meaning that a lot of blood that comes from the rest of the body containing the harmful waste, containing the toxins, also containing nutrients and gases, have to enter the kidney from where that blood is always filtered. And hence, this brings me to med the major function of the kidney in the body is to filter blood. Our blood, all the toxins we put in our body, I kept on speaking about this, overeating, eating all the junk, eating all the deep fried stuff, the eating all the packaged stuff, uh, taking alcohol, smoking, and all those GMOs, they contain uh, those, uh, as we, uh, they are farming them, they spray pesticides on them and wherever. So when you eat salads, you're having even pesticides, which are chemicals. The drugs that we take from the hospitals, those strong drugs from hospitals, the narcotics, the marijuana, the myrunja, and wherever, cocaine, all those enter our blood and make, and they, um, they, they, they pollute our blood, make it, uh, make, um, uh, and they become toxic, the blood, when they accumulate. So it is the role of your kidney to filter those wastes out of your blood. Uh, so as the blood is entering the kidney via the renal artery, these collecting ducts, and uh, there's uh, what you call the afferent and the afferent arterial, and then there's the Bowman's capsule. Later on, you're going to look at each of those things. Their major function is to ensure that all those toxic substances in, in blood are filtered out. They do not go back to blood in the general circulation. They remain in the filtrate within the kidney nephron, and they are eliminated out of the body via from, uh, within urine. So that is the major role of the kidney, is to filter or to purify blood of the toxic wastes and also to control the water levels in the body. Uh, the last time I was here, I was telling you that when you have excess water in blood, or you, when you do not have water in blood, there's a hormone you call angiuretic hormone that is secreted from the posterior part of your pituitary gland. And that hormone is always transported to your kidneys. And that hormone will make the kidney nephron or the walls of the collecting duct of the kidney more permeable to water. And so if you don't have enough water in your blood, that water will be reabsorbed from the urine that is being formed back into the blood. And so the kidney will perform that function of controlling water levels in your body, ensuring that you don't lose a lot of water in form of, uh, as part of urine, or ensuring that you reserve water and you produce little volumes of concentrated urine. So that, those are the two major roles of the kidney, purifying blood and controlling the amount of water in the blood. And that is all I have to speak about a kidney. But what about a defected kidney? Um, what will happen to your body in case your kidney is not functioning so well? In case you've, 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 you've overstrained your kidney. And um, I'm speaking this because right now you are 12, you're 13, you're 14, 15, 16, 18. And some of you, when we look at your weight, you are like, my age, yes. You're 12, but you look like a 30-year-old because you've been home eating. You eat all the kasasiro that is at home, and you don't want to do work. You don't want to do activities. You don't want to do uh, chores, uh, chores at home, and you don't want to dig. And so you, you're always on TV watching games, watching movies, and this and this. As you eat, one, the excess uh, sugars that you eat, the ex excess starch that you eat, will form excess sugars in your body. When the, ex the sugars are formed in excess in your body, they are going to put a lot of stress and strain on your liver because the liver is meant to regulate the amount of sugars in your body. So when you have excess sugars in your, in your blood, excess glucose, the liver will perform a task of um, ensuring that in, in, together with insulin hormone, the excess glucose is converted to glycogen and stored under the liver. And if the liver fails to get that excess glucose, uh, because it can only take only 100 grams of it, if the excess are there and they're converted to fats, um, then proteins, and they're still sugars, then that sugar has to go to the kidney. And the kidney is also again strained to remove those sugars, excess sugars out of your blood, lest they appear in urine. So. In most cases, the, our lifestyle, our eating habits, what we drink, 
puts a lot of stress on both the liver and the kidney. And that explains why in most cases these two organs fail at the same time. If, if in most cases, when someone is diagnosed with a kidney failure, the other thing they have to check is the liver. You find that both of them are not in proper conditions. And because the kidney is meant to fil purify or filter blood of the toxins, when you take alcohol or when you smoke, that alcohol, it, it's the liver. Because it has to detoxify the alcohol, it's toxic. And when the alcohol persists in blood, goes to the kidney, the kidney has to purify it out and goes by to the urine. So whatever lifestyle we are living right now directly impacts on the kidney and the liver. Now someone will say, well, why should I keep a healthy liver and a kidney? Why should I die with a healthy liver and kidney? Why should you stress people to give you a kidney at 40 years because you want to live? Because you... Your lifestyle put a lot of strain on your kidney and the liver, and now it's failing, but you're still young, and they are telling you that, you know what, you can still live so long as you get a kidney. And now you start uh, looking for a fresh kidney. It's not easy to get a kidney. To get a new kidney, a kidney transplant, it, 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 it basically comes from within your lineage, your family lineage, because those people have almost the same blood group as you, the same uh, rageous factor, small major histocompatibility complex, compatibility. So you in order to avoid all that stress people your lifestyle must be monitored at an, a young age because the more strain you put on your kidney at a young age at this point they can work you take alcohol they will feel uh, that the liver will detoxify you take those strong medicines the liver will detoxify you talk you take narcotics the liver you take a lot of poisonous the drugs and wherever the kidney and the liver right now they can but the more you stress them the more they get or they also go on getting tired because they do this on a daily basis you eat every time you eat a meal you're putting your liver on task and your kidney on task every time you eat on a daily, every day. And some of you eat almost every after a second, every after an hour. So you strain these organs a lot in your youthful age. And by the time you're turning an adult at 30, 35, 40, uh, the organs are getting tired. And then you're having a lot of signs and symptoms that show that you're having organ failure at a tender age. And you feel you've just started life. Life starts at 40. And you feel you've just started, but the organs are failing. So what about a failed kidney and a failed liver in the next slide we're also going to look at what happens to your body when your kidney fails kidney failure in the next slide now when the kidney fails uh, kidney failure uh, um, is it has a lot of causes but kidney failure can be chronic or it can be acute something that is chronic i mean it develops over time slowly over a period of time. Or it, it's acute, it moves very fast. Your kidney fails very fast. Now, what causes kidney failure? The chronic causes of kidney failure on your screen, one of them is hypertension, and the next is diabetes. And you know what? I've been speaking about diabetes and hypertension in the, f uh, in, in the previous lessons. Now, diabetes is, is a process whereby you, your urine contains glucose or sugar. And what brings about that is poor eating habits, poor lifestyles. Like you eat a lot of starch that you don't need and you don't need those that much starch in your body. Your body needs quite less. You have less activity and so the demand of your body for that food that you're eating is low. But for you give it more than it needs. So when you give it more than it needs, it's going to form a lot of sugars and then you put that stress on the liver and when the liver and the liver will have to uh, together with insulin hormone pancreas will have to get the excess sugars convert them into glycogen but it can only take a hundred grams and then the rest are converted to fats proteins are not stored in the body the excess sugars are taken to the kidney and at the proximal convoluted tubule the sugars will also need to be reabsorbed back either into the blood. So or if, if it fails, the kidney fails, then the sugars will appear in your urine. That's how you become diabetic. So eating diabetes is one common cause of kidney failure. And most people who are diabetic, they end up with kidney failure. The next thing is hypertension. Hypertension is all about high blood pressure. So a uh, pressure on a eating day. And you know what brings about high blood pressure? Still, it's lifestyle, eating habits, eating a lot of saturated fats, cholesterol, 
pizza, burgers, the, 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 uh, these cooking oils that you use that have a lot of cholesterol in them. And, you know, and this myself will come and stick onto the walls of your blood vessels, reducing the diameter, increasing the pressure of blood. And then you become hypertensive. And also eating a lot of salts and sugars. Because when you eat a lot of salt and sugars, you're going to uh, prevent um, water... Uh, reabsorption in your blood and so you're going to have a high volume of blood and a high volume of blood means uh, uh, the volume and pressure are inversely proportion so the volume and the pressure will be affected and that's how people become hypertensive and and this also has a direct effect on causing your kidney to fail now these two diabetes and hypertension are chronic they cause kidney failure slowly over a long period of time. But when we have those, those which are acute, like kidney disease, diseases of the glomerulus, or maybe the kidney, so that one can cause instant kidney failure, strong medications. There are some medications you go to hospital, you know, because it's a lot of chemicals and the kidney and the liver are put on a task to detoxify and to purify your blood of those medications. So strong medications, extremely strong medications that you take on a daily can also cause a kidney failure. Then autoimmune disorders, this is where your body recognizes its own cells as foreign and then fights its own cells. Like the body looks at your kidney as a foreign and fights it look at just like by use of its immunity and that can also cause kidney failure instantly so how do you know that my kidney is failing one of them one of the signs and symptoms is fatigue or feeling tired that tiredness then the common one is swelling around what you call edema around your hands you swell and then around your ankles in your feet that swelling is a common sign of kidney and and liver, uh, kidney, kidney failure. However, the swelling around the ankles, the odema can be maybe pregnancy and wherever. It's about blood circulation, but still it's one sign of the kidney. Then you get stomach upset, you, 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 you vomit, or you get nauseated, and some of you fail to concentrate and you become confused. All those are signs and symptoms of a failing kidney. Now, when you go to the hospital, they will carry out urinary tests, they will carry out organ tests uh, to find out whether these sim sim symptoms you're having are the ones that are bringing about, uh, are either because of kidney failure or something different. So when they find that your kidney is failing, there are two treatments of kidney failure that you're having. The first one is dialysis. Do you see that gentleman on top, <laughs> on machines? That machine is called a dialysis machine. It performs the function of a kidney. <laughs> instead, uh, the ki instead of the ki your kidney purifying your blood, that machine is helping that gentleman purify his blood. And you know dialysis can take close to 10 hours. You've been in hospital for 10 hours just to do dialysis. And you can do it like three times every after three days. You're on a machine taking millions and millions of money. Why don't you control the amount of food you're eating? Instead of you putting, taking your life up to that level. Now, that is dialysis. It's kind of expensive. So, please. It is expensive to do it every after three days. So, please. The next thing is kidney transplant. Here, you can see at the bottom, they're doing organ transplant. And you know what? I said, some of you be, be taking alcohol. This is to the adults even. You'll be taking alcohol saying, what is the importance of dying with a functioning, what, liver or whatever kidney? People, you will take that alcohol from your 20s and by your 40s, if you have a bad luck, your liver and the kidney are failing. And you feel like life has just started because that's when you've just started ma making returns of your, your sweat. And you start disturbing people to get a kidney or a liver. And you know, transplant, it's in millions of money, dollars, and it's not done anywhere. It's not easy. It's not easily done. Not even here in Uganda. People move to India, to Turkey, to do kidney transplants. Ngagwe <laughs> 
you, the only thing is transplant because they, uh, they do your kidney, you can have one kidney failing and you use one kidney and life moves normally. But the moment both of them fail at the same time, you're gone. The only thing you need is a transplant and transplant is very, very expensive. So those are the two basic treatments you can get if in any case your kidney fails. So please people, if you know that you are in, in my category, whereby you are just looking for money <laughs> and there's not much enough money on you and you have quite a lot of things to do, you're still a young person and you really have a lot of dreams and goals to achieve in life, live a, a careful life. These foods that we find, the junk that we find that is appealing, eat it, the ice cream, the ba burgers, the pizzas, eat it, but sparingly. Because at the end of the day, when you overeat them, you put a lot of strain on those two organs, the liver and the kidney. And those two organs, you can look them no obigaya, ne, at, at them no obigaya, but when a kidney is destroyed or a liver, your entire body system will change. Now, ojakwechu, ojakwechu. You will, it will change. You, you swell, swell everywhere. Yeah, the, eye, the color of the eyes change to yellow. You get jaundice. You, 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 no, we So please regulate the lifestyle. Let the kidney failure be caused by disease and other autoimmune disorders, things that you have no control, but things that you have control over, regulate diabetes and hypertension. Other than that, I've spoken all this. My name is Jovia Katuhaisi. Today we have looked at the uh, excretion in mammals, but you have not completed this. We are starting from here to the next time I come here. The next time I come here, God willingly, we are going to see, uh, to look at how urine is formed. Omsulo, tunyo amazi, but after you feel like you want to go to the toilet, how is urine formed? That is what we're going to look at in the next lesson. But then we looked at excretory waste, uh, urine, the mammalian urinary system, the kidney as an organ, and what happens to your body when the kidney fails. Other than that, my name is Jovia Katuhaisi. The activity for today is just on your screen. That is 2004, question number 38. If you do that activity, kindly reach out to me on my email. My email is katuhaisej at gmail.com. Thank you so much. I remain yours truly, Jovia Katuhaisi for God and my country.